Hello friends, how are you doing and I hope you really are all having a great and fun time and everything is going smooth and awesome, right? So we will now discuss the CBSC pattern question exercise on the chapter locomotion and movement. What are the, so we will start with the one mark question and we will see what we can answer. What are ligaments, right? What are ligaments? So ligaments are the connective tissue that joins the two bones together, right? Ligaments. are the connective tissue, ligaments are the connective tissue that joins the two bones together. Right? So the ligaments are the two bones are the connective tissue that join the two bones together and hence you know these are what are the ligaments. We move on to the next question, what are the antagonistic muscles? What are the antagonistic muscles? Antagonistic muscles, antagonistic muscles are those muscles are those muscles which work, right? Antagonistic muscles are those muscles which work opposite. to each other, right? So antagonistic muscles are those muscles which work opposite to each other and for example, the biceps and the triceps. Why as they work contrary to each other, right? As they work contrary to each other, okay, as they work contrary to each other, the biceps and the triceps. We move on to the next question, name the antagonistic muscle of the biceps. The antagonistic muscle of, muscle of biceps are the triceps. The antagonistic muscle okay the antagonistic muscle of biceps are the triceps okay so the antagonistic muscle of the biceps are the triceps List any two functions of ribs in our body. Yeah, there are ribs, you know, we already know that there are the true ribs, the floating ribs, the false ribs and all that, right? So we will see their function. <coughs> the function of ribs in our body 
okay. The function of ribs in our body are the thoracic rib cage will protect the heart as well as the lungs, you know, because it forms a cage all around and that will protect the lungs and the heart. Okay. So, the thoracic rib cage will protect the lungs, right. The thoracic rib cage will protect the lungs and the heart. The thoracic rib cage will protect the lungs and the heart. The secondly, also the thoracic rib cage expands okay and the chest the thoracic rib cage expands and this increases the and this increases the thoracic volume and this increases okay also the thoracic rib cage expands and this increases the thoracic volume and hence this will and hence this will help in the process of respiration, in the process of respiration, right. So, the thoracic rib cage expands and this increases the thoracic volume and hence this will help in the process of respiration. Name the type of cartilage present between the vertebrae to allow the limited movements. Name the type of cartilage present between the vertebrae to allow the limited movement. The type of cartilage, right, the type of cartilage present between the vertebrae present between the vertebrae to allow limited movement, to allow limited movement is the intervertebral disc is the intervertebral disc. Okay. So, the type of cartilage present between the vertebrae to allow limited movement is called as the intervertebral disc. We move on to the next question what are the terms used for the plasma membrane and the cytoplasm of the muscle cells.
So, the plasma membrane and the cytoplasm of the muscle cell. Now, we all know that you know the plasma membrane has got a special name of the muscle cell and even the nuclei, okay. Everything, for example, okay, when we talk of the muscle cells. right we say that the plasma membrane here plasma membrane right is called here is called in muscle cells as what as sarcolemma right is called as sarcolemma The plasma membrane in, is called in muscle cells as sarcolemma, as sarco, sarcolemma. The cytoplasm of the muscle cell is called as the sarcoplasm. Okay, the cytoplasm of muscle cells is called the cytoplasm of muscle cells is called as sarcoplasm. The endoplasmic reticulum of the muscle cells is called as sarcoplasmic reticulum, right. The endoplasmic reticulum of muscle cells is called as sarcoplasmic reticulum. Okay. The endoplasmic reticulum of muscle cells is called as the sarcoplasmic reticulum. What are the terms used for the plasma membrane in cytoplasm muscle cell? The plasma membrane is called in muscle cells as the sarcolemma. The cytoplasm of the muscle cells is called as the sarcoplasm and the endoplasmic reticulum of the muscle cells is called as the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Right. What is the function of the pectoral girdle and the pelvic girdle? Pectoral girdle. The pectoral girdle and the pelvic girdle, these two are two girdles, so we can say, you know, these two are, uh, you know, these are the two ball and socket joint present, one in the shoulder and the other in the hip. So, the pectoral girdle. This also forms the shoulder joint ok. So, the pectoral girdle also forms the shoulder joint where where the humerus bone will articulate right this also form the shoulder joint where the humerus bone will articulate and what is the function? Thus, the pectoral girdle 
the pectoral girdle provides support to the upper limbs. Thus, the pectoral girdle will provide support to the upper limbs. Thus, the pectoral girdle will provide support to the upper limbs. pelvic girdle. This is also called this also forms the this also this also forms the hip joint this also forms the hip joint. and here the femur bone articulates, the femur bone will articulate this forms, this provides support to the lower limbs, this provides support to the lower limbs, this provides support to the lower limbs. So, this is the function of the pectoral and the pelvic girdle. Discuss the three types of synovial joint. First of all, we will see you know that synovial joint is a joint you know where the synovial fluid is present okay, and there is a movement possibility in this joint. Synovial joint is a joint right, synovial joint is a joint where the synovial fluid is present where the synovial okay, where the synovial fluid is present synovial joint is a joint where the synovial fluid is present and there will be movement possibility and there will be movement possibility in this joint. Synovial joint is a joint where the synovial fluid is present and there will be movement possibility in this joint. The three types of synovial joint are number one, first and foremost we will have the ball and socket joint, ball and socket joint and in this we have the pectoral girdle and the pelvic girdle, pectoral
and pelvic girdle. The pectoral and the pelvic girdle. The second one is the gliding joint and the third one is the hinge joint. Okay. The hinge joint which you know which allows movement only in one direction. This will allow movement this will allow movement in one direction only that is knee okay that is knee and elbow joint and elbow joint right The ball and socket joint, the gliding joint and the hinge joint, this will allow movement in direction in one direction only that is the knee and the elbow joint. We move on to the next question, explain any two disorders of the bone. Okay. Disorders of the bone, there can be many disorders of the bone, there can be many disorders of the bone. For example, let us state some of the disorders, for example, we will start with the rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. Then we can talk of the gouty arthritis, we can talk of the gouty arthritis. After the rheumatoid arthritis, gouty arthritis, we can talk of the osteoporosis, osteoporosis, osteopetrosis is also one condition. So, you know there are many such conditions we can talk of, but we know we will try to, okay, let us see what is a rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. Now, what happens here? What happens here? There will be the presence of the rheumatoid fractor. Okay. There will be the presence There will be the presence of rheumatoid factor, okay. There will be the presence of rheumatoid factor which will be present, okay, which will be present in the rheumatoid factor as a result of which, as a result of which there will be inflammation so there will be the presence of rheumatoid factor as a result of which there will be inflammation of the joints right there will be inflammation of the joints and hence painful and hence painful joint condition okay and hence painful joint condition this is what we are talking 
when we are talking of the rheumatoid arthritis, okay, when you are talking about the rheumatoid arthritis. Talking about the gouty arthritis, here there will be accumulation of uric acid crystals, here there will be accumulation of uric acid crystals. Okay, so, here there will be accumulation of the uric acid crystals and hence painful joint condition and hence painful joint condition, right. We move on to the next question, what happens to the leg muscle of an athlete who runs a marathon race, okay. An athlete who runs a marathon race, a marathon race, okay, keeps on running for some time, keeps on running, okay, keeps on running for some time. An athlete who runs a marathon race keeps on running for some time as a result of which there is accumulation of lactic acid as a result of which there is accumulation of lactic acid, okay, because no oxidation, because no oxidation. Hence, the athlete will develop cramps, hence the athlete will develop cramps in his body. Now, cramps are the condition where the muscles are in a state of contraction for a longer period of time without relaxation. Okay? So, friends for this we have come to the end of this discussion, for any doubts you can always get back to me, go back revise this and the time we meet again a very good bye from this side, thank you.